Steve, going back to that second quarter, I mean, even leading up to, to Chris's ejection, is that where everything just yeah. kind of started to... Yeah. Yeah, we were we were pretty good the first eight minutes of the game. Ball was moving, and uh, we were getting good looks, and um, energy was good. And um, the fouling in the uh, you know late in the first quarter really hurt us. Mid to late, I think they shot 13 free throws in the first quarter, um, which put us on pace to give up 52, which is exactly what we gave up. So we just foul, 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 and. Um, you can't can't win in the NBA if you're constantly trying to attack a set defense after free throws and you're giving up you know basically 44 points to, uh, tonight off the free throw line. So it was the fouling and then I think the offense stopped too. The ball really stuck after the first eight minutes and uh, so that second quarter was really frustrating for everybody and um, I like the way the uh, the bench came in and fought in the second half and gave us a chance, but um, we have to be much more consistent. And then with Chris's ejection, I mean, from your vantage point, from your understanding, what Chris said, what Scott said, I mean, I know you also got a technical on that play. Yeah. What was the issue? What was going on there? Uh, I, I think Scott just felt like... Um, Chris didn't stop, and he kept going, and that's why he gave him the second one. So um, that was his explanation. What was your frustration when you were, you know, drawing at him? Well, I didn't. I, I didn't think Chris deserved to be ejected. I mean, I, I don't. You know, the 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 first tech absolutely, but I thought um, the second one was unnecessary. You know, I mean, everybody gets frustrated out there, and um, you know, but that's uh, that's up to the official. What was your, uh, your thoughts on, on how the bench was able to get you guys back in the same? Was there any consideration of like Stafford? There was consideration, but you know it's one of those games where um, the bench goes out and plays great, um, much better than the starters played, and um, they get you back in it, and you reward them and you stay with it. But we we definitely thought about it. Um, but um, those are those are weird moments, you know, as as a coach, where you just it doesn't feel right to go away from the group that is playing great. And um, you know, I think that was a decision to stay with them because they were making the run, and um, that's kind of usually how we we do it. Most teams do it. It was sort of the practical impact and the emotional impact of losing Chris at that stage. Maybe. Yeah, it was a big deal. You know, we we need him obviously. Um, we're without Draymond. Um, you know, without Gary, we're, we're already shorthanded, and, and Chris knows that. Um, so it was uh, it was unfortunate, but, um, you know, again, it's to me it's about uh, our guys competing together, consistently competing together. And uh, I, they, they have a really good connection. Um, it's a great group. They really like each other. Um, but when you see a team compete together you know it you feel it it's a communication it's it's playing with force it's playing downhill it's playing with great communication you can hear everybody you know um talking defensively although in this building you can't hear anything because it's like a club it's like a it's like a south beach club out there what are we doing i'm being dead serious like i couldn't hear anything out there it's just the whole whole game it's just this thumping techno club music can we just have a basketball game anymore what the hell sorry for the rant <laughs> uh, coach what is oh steve kerr ripping the footprint center in game <laughs> entertainment of course he talked he discussed the bench the bench actually had their fourth game this season where he scored at least 50 points in a basketball game but he also touched on chris paul in the ejection say look he deserved a technical but an ejection Absolutely not. But Steve Kerr kept the professional there, Molly. Yeah, much like players and coaches, referees have to be held to the same standards. It's all about your decision-making. Chris Paul may have said something for the first technical foul. There's a lot of frustration going on. Turn your back and ignore him, right? But he kind of keeps his ears and his eyes on Chris Paul. Who knows what he said? I thought it an unprofessional yeah. decision by Scott Forster. Uh, you know, perpetuated with the fact that everyone knows there's a history with the two. Yep. Unbelievable right I, there. I, I don't even know what to say. There has to be a limit in how many texts you can call in one game as well. Scott Foster, there's a very active night for him. Um, but I don't want to focus all the attention on Scott Foster because um, because I also believe that this, this, this game was just a... 
You know, they talk about the basketball gods and karma. And with the Warriors, the idea of this game is to focus on the details of this game. And so all those turnovers and all that, they just caused a lot of frustrations right. that led to the first tech. And maybe that was out of frustration, but Scott Foster's frustration back led to a bunch of the other calls. And, you know, it's just, like I said, it's karma. I like your perspective about it because we're talking about Chris Paul being ejected right. and how it affected the Warriors. How about the fans? Yeah. That's Somebody the other maybe, perspective too. Hey, there may be a Chris Paul fan there in Phoenix, Arizona, seeing them I'm for sure the first time. And you pay a lot of money. Warriors are a hot ticket. And you eject them with 23 seconds left in the first half because you don't like them because of the personal history. Just unacceptable. Unprofessional by Scott Foster. I'm sorry. That's just, you can't have that in this league. Speaking of which, let's hear from CP3. Radio Bonte is out right now. It's unacceptable. Yeah, it's, it's personal. Yeah. We had a situation some years ago, and it's personal. You know what I mean? Like, the league know, everybody knows. It's been a meeting and all that, and it's just a situation with my son. And so it's, yeah, we, yeah, so I'm I'm okay with a ref talking, you know, saying whatever, saying just don't use a tech to get your point across. You know what I mean? So I got to do a better job making sure I stay on the floor for my teammates, but. Yeah, that's that's that. You said it's a situation with your son? Yeah, they know what it is. He know what it is, too, so. We don't know what it is. Yeah, it's just no, I had a meeting with him, my dad, Doc Rivers, Bob Belaney, and all us, so. Yeah, yeah, him, too. Is that back in when you were with Houston? With the Clippers. Clippers. So, come out of that it was a whole thing, man. But it's it's still been a thing for a while. So, I ain't saying nothing to get fined, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is what it is at this point. Uh, what were your feelings at the beginning of the game when you heard the roar from the crowd in your tribute video? Tribute video. Uh, they, they did run a video like like a minute or two before tip off, just saying welcome back, Chris. I'm throwing you. Man, that's crazy. I'm I'm in the back. Yeah, they actually. Well, damn, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for real, man. This fan base is amazing to to me and my family. You know what I mean? Every game, like seven minutes on the clock, I'm in the back. I'm trying to get this engine started for the game, but. Uh, Man, I, I appreciate them wholeheartedly. Seriously, I had three amazing years here. I'd like to ask one more about the incident. Were you looked like you were surprised in the second? Did you think it was done? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna pop your, shit, you know what I'm saying. Don't don't use the tech to get your point across. You know what I'm saying. That's the only thing with it. You know, we we had these conversations all the time. There's some officials that are talk back to you and stuff like that, which is sometimes it's healthy. It's an intense game. You know, you go back and forth, but it's like some poly, like we, you just going, you get to give a tech to get your point across. You know what I'm saying? So at that point though, when something was said, I, I ain't care no more, you know, so it is what it is. I'm sure I see him in a game seven soon. That's <laughs> <laughs> how it always works out with him. Just one more on that. You mentioned he's trying to make a point. What point do you think he's trying to make to you? I don't know. He got the power because he can call the tech. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's how it's been for a long time. You know what I mean? He, <laughs> I ain't going to go there. <laughs> Let me chill. Um, yeah. yeah, you got to say the judge, jury, and the, <laughs> yeah. All right,